Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite GIMP with a limp. And as you can see, I am definitely here with something a little bit uh, different for you. I decided I was gonna be doing a little painting this evening. I usually close out my evenings actually just doing a little painting, whatever models I got going on. This is actually a Blood Bowl team. The, uh, which one are these called? The Champions of Death. I love like the undead are always my team. So it doesn't matter what game it is. I'm always gonna go with zombies, skeletons, vampires, all that type of stuff. My computer making dings in the background. So what I kind of figured I would do with this, this might end up being a one-off if no one likes it or watches it or cares for it. Do a little video where I just kind of ramble, paint, show you guys kind of some of the, my little techniques. Now, don't watch this crap to learn how to paint because I don't paint that damn well. My, uh, my hands are just too damn shaky from that landmine blowing my ass to keep to come. But uh, some people have asked about my painting jobs before, so I figured I'd uh, show you a little bit of what I use and my little techniques. And I've been talking to Rob Warren a little bit uh, over at uh, Warren Pieces. He's been giving me some advice on some things I should try out. Definitely go check him out. He's uh, much better at the, the painting thing than I am. Uh, so you'll be able to learn a lot more from him, but it kind of looks fun just to sit there and kind of ramble. And I'll tell you this, right? That a lot of YouTubers have got it to where they just kind of ramble to themselves. And it, it comes with the fact that when you're filming a lot and you do a lot of live streaming or videos or, or whatever, like for me, you know, I play games on, uh, on camera for you guys that you find yourself talking to yourself more often than you should and times that you shouldn't. <laughs> so uh, I figured this way, at least if I'm talking to myself, someone might be paying attention, tell you guys stories or uh, just talk about whatever the hell is on my mind. If you want to watch it, cool. If not, yeah, there's millions of videos on YouTube. You know, feel free to check them out. Uh, give you a little heads up of my little setup here. You can see I've got the little cut mat. Definitely recommend get one of these. Doesn't have to be you know, anything fancy, but I recommend having it because it keeps you from messing up your table. You can cut into them, keeps your paint, you know, in the same little areas. As far as paint supplies, absolutely going with Army Painter. I freaking love Army Painter because when I first got into painting, I was using that cheap crap you would get like Michaels or Walmart or the, the crappy acrylic paints, right? And that stuff, it just wasn't any good. And I didn't know then what I know now about painting. And so I bought the, the cheapest paints I could and the cheapest brushes I could. And I painted a few models and they look like garbage. Oh my God, they look like garbage. I'll have to do a video one day where I show you guys some of my uh, old models. I've actually got some sitting on the shelf over there. And I tried to do things like mix a little paint, like black paint with water and kind of wash that over as like a wash and it pretty much ruined the model and just made things look horrible. I mean, nothing came out like I thought it would. And of course that paint was far, 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 far too thick uh, to use because it comes down to the pigment that's in these paints, right? The the thinner the pigment, the, that's gonna give you a better coat. You want like a thinner coat, you want multiple layers if you can. Now I don't do that, I should do that. I, uh, I generally want to do one coat and be done with the damn thing. Uh, but you want those those thin pigments. And what I found when I was kind of poking around with, with other paints, because of course, Reaper paints are good, uh, Citadel paints are good, but when it comes to quality versus cost, I have found that Army Painter is the best that uh, you're gonna come across, not because their paint is the absolute best, but because it's model level quality, like miniature level quality at a fair price. Okay, you're not gonna, you know, I mean, you can. I mean, I've seen some people use Army Painter to paint some excellent stuff. I am, let's just put it this way. I'm not gonna be painting, you know, master level stuff with this uh, with this paint, but you absolutely can because the paint is of that quality. Your pigment's thin enough uh, that you can use it to, to do whatever. And of course, they've got a whole different line of washes and inks and a whole bunch of different colors. And what I did and worked for me, and you can, you know, do whatever works for you is I bought their, like their smaller box set, like the, I forget what the hell it's called. It wasn't like the huge, huge mega set that's hundreds of dollars, but I bought a box set to kind of get myself an array of base colors to start. And then whenever I would stop by my favorite local game store, I would pick up a paint or two, 
right? Whatever color I was short on, maybe I needed some grays, maybe I need some blues. And I went ahead and printed out some of these, which are just 3D printed, but they hold these paints so well. I've got uh, six or seven of these things printed out and divided them up by colors, put them, you know, as storage. It works a lot better than the, uh, the box they came in. But uh, yeah, that way I didn't crush myself when it came to trying to buy a whole paint collection all at once. <clears throat> Spend five, six bucks here, five, six bucks there. And then over time, you start to build up a collection. Of course, there's a, a bunch of paints I still want to get from, from them, but I'm going to pick them up over time. And something else I would suggest, I, I know you guys are like, paint something already, but I wanted to kind of point out a few things to you. All right, you want to get some cleaning stuff, right? So this is paintbrush cleaner, and you just put a little water on your paintbrush, move it back and forth. You can see the, the paint will come off in there. Of course, I had black on there recently, but it works good to do that. But there's a solution as well. I'll show you in the next video if this series actually goes somewhere. somewhere. I put this little uh, paint dropper, and I mix it with a little bit of water, and it's like a solution that eats the paint. Like, it will eat the paint off the brushes, actually. Uh, on top of that, actually, you can see it here in this paintbrush. Let's see if I don't know if it's focusing in because the camera is 180 to me, but you can see where the paintbrush is actually wood showing through because it took the paint off of that. <clears throat> Dilute it with a little bit of water, and that will really strip those uh, paints off. And if you put it in this little dropper, your paintbrushes, if you've got one that's really gummed up, you can just stick it in there, leave it overnight, and you'll be fine to, to take care of it the next day. One last thing definitely got to suggest is the ball bearings. Pick up some of those. I went with these little ones at first, but they did a shit job. So I switched to the big boys. I think these are something like six or seven millimeter ball bearings. They're nice and heavy and you can actually hear it. Let me see if I can find one that's got one of these. Yeah, you can hear that. It's got a nice heavy ball bearing in it and it's no different than a dab lame uh, spray can. You put a little ball bearing in it, shake it up just to stir up your paint. Definitely got to recommend getting some of those because otherwise your paint will gloop up and separate out. I mean, every paint will do it. Uh, it doesn't matter what type of paint it is or what brand it is. They'll all do that crap. And it helps to have a little holder. This is a little Citadel holder I picked up from uh, my local game store. But you can print some of these off or use a little block of wood with a little green tack on the top. Doesn't matter whichever one you want to go with. So... I'm gonna paint for a few minutes since I've talked for most of this video. Unfortunately, I was having to update my damn camera. I've gotta get a new camera. <laughs> this thing's starting to wear out on me. Unfortunately, the brush I was using too, I let the paint strip off of it. Probably the reason it was so thin and nice and usable is because the paint was stuck up on it. But I am working on these guys here, the Shambling Undead. So I'm gonna to try to put a little bit more on them. I went ahead and got a close color you can see on these that they've got like this bluish burnished metal look going on and I knew I couldn't match it that well so I just went with a straight metallic for some of them. Uh, some it's going to be like a dark metallic and then some it's a light silvery metallic and then I'm going to just fill in the bone or leather on whatever else uh, whatever part. You can see the mummies I've got done already so they're they're washed and painted up and I mean looking pretty decent. That's the metallic color I was talking about. You've got a little silver and then whatever that's brownish. What do they call that one? Burnt iron or something, rough iron. I like that color. It's a new metallic that I picked up. So good one there. These mummies came out pretty good. Let's try some more of these guys. I got a couple in progress. And like I said, bear with me on the angles because I think I've got the angles right for this. Let me take a look. That's uh, pretty good. Just hold it like that. Should be all right. Uh, but I think I've got the angles close enough. It'll be a learning process for me to learn how to, to film this just right for you guys and where to zoom in and all the other good stuff. But most of the stuff on this guy I got done. Now, the way I've seen other people do it, and I think kind of works, is to, to pick out your details. And one of the things is I'm very anal about trying to stay within the lines they don't and they just paint over it but i'm afraid the color will show through like this dark color here if i get some where the bone goes that bone's not going to paint over that that's just not going to work so i try to definitely keep that within the lines as much as i can but he's got a little bit of a scarf around his neck that's left 
and his boots. And other than that, it's just bone and a wash that needs to be painted onto these guys. So I think I'm gonna try to hit that real quick. I decided I'm gonna do like a light brown here for the, uh, the little bit of a scarf crap that he's got it going on and then a bone color. And I do have a nice skeletal bone that I'm gonna use. And you can hear skeletal bone does not have the, uh, the ball bearing in it. So you guys get to see me add one of those here to it real quick. So let's pull it out and just pop it because it's a little dropper, right? Grab one of our little ball bearings out and plunk her in there, bam. And once you put these things in there, they will kind of spew over. Oh, you see how it does that? I mean, let some of that paint get into my thing so I don't waste it. Oh, I hate that, how it kind of spews out. But we can put that back on. And now you can hear it is shaking up quite nicely. Oh, and one last thing I forgot to show you guys. This is my wet palette. This is a little cheap one that I made. You can buy a wet palette or you can just do like I did. This is just a takeout container from a Chinese restaurant that I washed out. Fill it full of some paper towels and then get them lightly damp. You want them just kind of damp to the touch. Put a little sheet of parchment paper over the top of it and it helps to keep your paint wet so it doesn't dry out. Because if you use things like these little palettes, I mean, they work, but your paints are gonna dry out. So definitely try to use the wet palette when you can. It kind of helps also with the, uh, what's the thing I'm mixed, thinking of? Like thinning out your paints a little bit because you've already introduced a little bit of moisture to them. So you're not trying to guess all the time of what moisture you're adding to it. But I've already got a little bit. I'm like so anal when it comes to my paints too. I only put out like the tiniest drop because I don't want to waste them. This shit's expensive. You know what I mean? So I do not like to waste that crap. So I'll put just a little bit in there and use it. So let's grab him up, throw him on here. I wanted to do the the uh, the browns that were left first, but since I went ahead and put that in there and I've got some paint, uh, paint out, we'll go ahead and do the, the bone because I can touch that up later if I need to. So hit these areas here. But yeah, you guys let me know if you uh, like these little paint videos where I just kind of ramble on and show you a little bit of what I'm working on had a lot of little projects going on the the core space I was working on that recently like I said pay attention I will have more videos of that coming up very soon as soon as I finish a couple of series that I'm working on uh, currently I've got so many projects I want to do you just you cannot keep up as an independent reviewer with all the games that are coming out because the there's just so many good ones and a lot of times people ask me, like, are you going to cover this? Are you going to cover that? And it's not that I don't want to. It's that I just don't have the time. Like, I I can't remember the last time I've actually covered. I think Core Space was the last one that I, that I covered really just because I wanted to. And I didn't have anyone else asking or pushing for me to cover that specific game. Damn, this brush, it's still like a little thick with with paint on it and that's that and that solution overnight but yeah like definitely uh thank your uh reviewers for covering the stuff if they cover something that you've requested because they're doing it at the expense i can guarantee you at the expense of other things they might want to be playing because once i get done with getting the kids in bed and getting the wife's little honeydew list taken care of whatever crap that she's got for me and you guys have seen her she uh She's outside my pay grade, so I got to keep her happy. You know how that works. And, but she's sweet. She lets me do all my game stuff, so I can't really complain. And my other little hobbies, which is uh, carpentry, by the way. Building little wooden boxes and, and stools. Built her a couple of benches and a uh, couple of bar stools. Built a planter for our neighbor lady as well been keeping myself busy during the whole little COVID lockdown. Well, this actually isn't a bad idea doing the bones first because the bone is a lighter color that I'm going to be using for 
the boots and the uh, little scarf here. So by doing that, and I've got to do, see, I hate stuff like this. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm talking about. How he has kind of like an arm strap. I hate those because I always end up like missing them. <clears throat> and more often than not, the model isn't detailed enough to really see where all that stuff is. Now, these are GW models, which means they're good. So usually you can pick out all the detail that's on those and you don't have to worry about not being able to, to see the little minutia to get them painted. But some lesser quality models are a little bit harder to paint. Although, <clears throat> with as much as you have to pay for a dad blame GW model, they better damn well be high quality, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I have seen them charge like 30, 40 bucks for a single model. And I'm talking like a single model like this, right? So we're not talking about a tank or plane or something like that. We're talking about like a single character. It's almost like they charge based on the point value of the character in the game. And it's like, no, charge based on the amount of plastic in the damn model. At the the single characters like the champions or inquisitors or crap like that, they'll charge a fortune for those guys because they're you know high point value. But that doesn't mean you're you're paying more to produce them. You're definitely not. It's not costing you any more to ship that crap in from China. Although if they had to produce their stuff in house, like if they were producing it in the UK instead of China, I wonder how much their pricing model would change because they've already got such a severe markup because you know china isn't charging them that kind of money for uh for those models for those kits they're getting like that bulk discount how much crap they're ordering so i wonder hey you guys put down in the comments tell me like how much do you think the uh the markup is on that junk all that 40k stuff like my big thing i got out of 40k a long time ago and it wasn't as much that I wanted to. I just, I couldn't keep up with it. Not with everything else going on and starting a family. It's it's far too expensive. But I like their stuff. I like the 40K universe. I like the, not Sigmar. I like the fantasy universe. I don't like that they destroyed off the, the old way and ruined so many people's armies just to make them buy new armies. I thought that was kind of butched up. But you, uh. I got out of it because I just I couldn't afford to to keep up with all that crap. But the individual games, right? The the Blackstone Fortress, the Speed Freaks, the Blood Bowl. God, I love Blood Bowl. I freaking love Blood Bowl, which is strange because I'm not a huge sports nut, but I freaking love Blood Bowl. I think that actually comes from when I was a kid and my brother and I used to play Mutant League football. And Mutant League Hockey, like we played the shit out of those games back on the uh, the uh, Super Nintendo and the Genesis, right? Uh, you guys put down in the comments if you played that crap. Uh, we loved it. We played the crap out of it when we were kids. And I think Blood Bowl reminds me of that. And especially when you get into the undead teams, I, f I just love the undead teams. I've got to find the uh, the vampire team. And it, I am so upset because I actually had the original Blood Bowl, right? Back when it really came out, first came out, uh, what was it, like 20 years ago? I had the original Blood Bowl. I had a bunch of the original teams. And I actually competed in some tournaments when I was younger. I was a teenager at the time, I believe. And it was strange. A buddy of mine came to watch me play in a tournament. And he brought his girlfriend. He always dated these like hot girls. I think she worked at like Hooters or something like that. Although he's kind of fat now, so I chuckle about it. <laughs> I turned around on him on that one. But uh, he brought the girl with him. Like, dude, don't 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 bring girls to my nerd hobby. You're you're throwing me off a little bit. <laughs> and I'm not saying like girls couldn't be there, but this was uh, I want to say like in the the mid '90s or so, like late '90s. So. Hooters girls were not exactly known to be hanging around these stores. It was a bunch of middle-aged guys and a few young teenage guys who were playing in the tournament. Although, I gotta say, I think her presence actually 
helped me out a little bit because I had known her for a little while, so I wasn't distracted. But I think a few of the older guys were like, Rrr, and weren't paying attention to what was going on. But yeah, those uh, those individual games, man, I friggin' love them. I think that was genius of them to start doing that. <gasps> oh, and speaking of which, they've got uh, one that I would love for them to remake because it's hard to find the uh, the original, the Dread Fleet. I love old Age of Sail games, especially like if it's got ship models. Any of those, the the Age of Sail and cannon and swords and all that crap. I just I love that seer that that time frame, right? pirates and all that good stuff and to have one set in the the warhammer universe seemed like a really cool idea but i missed dreadfleet that and battlefleet gothic which both are out of print and i don't know if they have any plans of bringing those games back but if they brought back dreadfully hell if they brought battlefleet gothic back really too i'd look into getting into that because those i think were some like good games but they, oh, they do some, some stuff that just kind of makes you wonder. GW, what are you thinking? It's like, shut up, you're drunk, you're blowing your, your fans' good faith on charging too much damn money. But the the individual games like Blackstone Fortress, I think is genius. I think it's a good game. Now I get it. It's like they're. It's like they're little drug dealers and they're like, hey, here's your introduction to our plastic crack. Come try it out. Oh, look, you already have enough. And they're, they're so genius with this. They're like, you've got enough characters to play Kill Team now because the, the bad guys in the game box can be used as a kill team and the good guys in the, the box can be used as a kill team. So you've got a kill team already. So you can play Kill Team with this, which I think is, is really good. Uh, but they want to get you into that game. So then you get into Kill Team and you collect a couple of teams of Kill Team. And they're like, oh, well, just a little bit more investment. You'd have yourself an army for uh, 40K. Why not go ahead and try that out? So, I mean, we all know what they're doing. But as long as they do it in such a way that it's it's a fun game, right? And I think Kill Team's a fun game. I think they they did well with that. I enjoyed playing it with my brother. I'm going to try to get him back around, do a few more uh, matches of it. It's their little way to introduce you to their world of plastic crack and get you to try their other games. For me, though, at this stage of my life, with everything that I've got going on, there's, there's no way I can get back into 40K. I just don't have the time or the inclination, let alone the money, to invest in a whole army but I will invest in a little box set here or there that's a complete game set in the 40k universe where I get to have some of the lore and the fun that comes with their their stuff without having to, to break the bank. That's why I loved um, Blackstone Fortress so much. I think that's really good. I wanted to try... What is that one? Um, it's Warhammer Quest... Um, silver something, silver tower. I think it is silver tower. I wanted to try that one, but that one's just hard to get now. I think it's out of print. Man, this stuff is just sticking. Um, I wanted to try that one, but it's out of print. And there's another one, Warhammer Quest Hammer something. But I think that one is much more like GM dependent. And since I play them solo, for the most part, unless uh, the wife or the brother's playing with me then I definitely do not want the one that has a GM. I might have to try to track down Silver Tower at some point and try out, but I know they learned from their mistakes with Silver Tower and applied that to like uh, Blackstone Fortress. So they, and they do have a fair amount of expansions when it comes to uh, Blackstone Fortress. There's Escalation and like the Amble one and, I think one that adds Nurgle Marines, which Nurgle is my favorite. Grand Grandfather Nurgle. Shh, go for Grandfather Nurgle. Gotta love him. Oh, that's right. I, I gotta get his face. Okay, this one's gonna be bad. Because I'm gonna butcher this. Like I said, I'm not too worried if I get it on his scarf there around his neck. Damn, this little paintbrush is just doped up on me. It was so good. It was worked into this tiny little piece that I could paint anything with but I left it 
in that solution overnight to try to get it to where it would uh, get all the paint out of it. And now it's just like warped and it is not painting as well as it was yesterday. So I'm probably gonna have to replace that one. That is unfortunate. Ugh. But I've got a couple other brushes. Not that one. Not that one. I am going to invest in some new brushes. Rob and Mo from Mo's Game Table. Definitely check out Mo if you haven't. We're giving me some advice on some uh, paint brushes to try out. I jotted down the names. I'm gonna have to look those up and see what they are so I can invest in them because I need some better brushes. So that's, what am I switching to? What number is this? Does it even say a number? This is number zero. Yeah, let's try number zero. See how it does. So that's where we've gotten on that. Got the, the bone painted in. And this thing, like bone, is not white. That was one of the things I had to learn. All right, I got some right there around his pelvis that I gotta get. Yeah, this paintbrush is looking a lot better. A lot better. All right, hit those little spots. And the thing is, I mean, I'm not worried about it being perfect. It just has to look table ready, right? And it just has to look good. Now, models like this, if it's a model that I'm gonna have a whole bunch of, like if you guys have watched my uh, series on the Order of Vampire Hunters, when I did the painting for the hunters, I put a lot more effort into making them look good and make sure that they were done right. <clears throat> the vampires though, a lot of those are just the generic miniatures. So ooh, don't spread those bristles out. Don't mess up this brush, I just opened it. So those, I was not as worried about having them done uber correctly, all right? Just two or three colors, something to make them stand out a little bit, maybe have them like primed in black and then hit them with a dry brush of brown or gray, just depending on which uh, model they were, which would look better with them. Something simple like that can give you table ready miniatures in a relatively short amount of time it it doesn't have to look good if it not good but like excellent it doesn't have to be what's that golden demon is that the the gw competition it doesn't have to be golden demon ready just to play on your table if you just want it to look good for you and your buddies while you're playing a few a little bit of black with a little dry brush will put you in a good spot i have found a lot of times when it comes to those, the the bulk, the bulk enemies, right? You don't have to worry about putting in all that specific effort. I remember for Blackstone Fortress, I was driving myself nuts because I started painting the, the Trader Guardsman first. And I was putting in some serious time because I was painting them like they were the heroes and going for you know the minute detail the little buckles here and stuff there and after that i was like nope it took me like a week to paint just those handful of guys i am not going to do that with the rest of them <laughs> we're going to go with basic colors and some washes and and hope for the best because i don't like i said i don't mind putting that amount of time on the heroes because those are going to be the ones that you're focused on your main characters you want those to look as good as possible but the enemies, you're going to be putting them on the board, taking them off the board, putting them on the board, taking them off the board. And with that, there's no need to to spend all that time because you'll never play the game. You'll spend all your time painting the damn minis instead of playing it. Yeah, I'm going to rest my voice here for a sec. Like I say, it's kind of nice. I feel like I'm talking to someone. Although I'm probably not talking to anyone because I doubt anyone's going to watch this because I've never done a painting video before. So in a way, it means I'm kind of nuts because I am talking to myself. But that's all right. I think we're all a little nuts. All of us just a little bit weird. On the inside. But that's coming out all right there. Yeah, I got to say though, GW has just made some, some decisions that were questionable at best. 
like their video game policy is one that I have never understood because it's it's like they will give a license to anyone to make a video game with one of their IPs. And it's like, what the hell are you thinking? Some of those dumb mobile games that they've allowed to be put out in the 40K universe that are just crap. And I mean, for such a good IP, right? Like I, I love the storylines that they have, the Horace Heresy, I read a lot of the novels. You know, there's just, there's good stories behind all that. Why would you waste all that lore, all that material on crap uh, video games? Now, I, they did try hard when it came to the the Warhammer uh, online game, right? I know they tried hard on that. I played it. I know some of you guys probably played it too when it came out. And it wasn't bad, but they were trying to compete against WoW and WoW's turf. And it's at the time when everyone was releasing a MOBA, not MOBA game, a, uh, a online role-playing game. And they were competing against the big boys, and they, they had some good ideas. That Realm versus Realm was good. The, the open, open questing thing they had going on, where you could stumble upon other people who had a quest in the area, and then you'd all kind of team up. And take down the big baddie together. That I thought was a good idea. And that others, you know, should have taken heed of. Oh, don't get back there. But it just did not pan out. And strangely enough, I went to the dark side on that one. Usually I pick the good guys, but I ended up being a goblin engineer in that game, which was really strange. Because that is just not the, the usual type of character that I would pick. But I, I enjoyed it for... For what it was but i'll tell you the the best game that i've seen so far in the warhammer universe has got to be space marine the the third person shooter i thought that one was excellent i mean it's not perfect but it's pretty damn decent it's if you want to just sit there and shoot stuff using bolt guns playing as a space marine you're not going to find much better than that i mean they did pretty well with it and as far as i know i think the the multiplayer community still has people playing that game even all these years later like you can still get a match on that game which goes to show you people want the the warhammer universe they just want it done well you know i'd like to see a game more in the lines with uh, what was that recent one jedi fallen order that they released recently if they would do that level of a game with the Warhammer universe, and it wouldn't matter to me, you know, 40K or old, whichever way they wanted to go with it, as long as you're not using that new crap. Friggin' Skaven, who the hell ends the world with rats? They could have used vampires or something. What with the rats? That's just dumb. But I don't know. I never liked the Skaven. They're not my faction. You know, my faction. Von Karstein, love that guy. I think the vampires are where it's at. I don't know. I love the uh, the ability to summon more troops from the dead of your enemies. That's the way to go with it. Now, I just recently was trying it, the Mechanicus, and it seems to be okay. I picked it up on the uh, the Steam sale because they had a lot of Warhammer games on sale for a good amount off, like half off, sixty percent off think i got it for like nine bucks and it's all right so far i have just got through like the first level or two of the game but i'm trying to finish up uh space marine and so many other little projects that i'm working on that i do not get a whole lot of time to play video games that is a a rarity i mean hell i could be playing it now but instead i'm sitting here filming a video for you guys Thank you, Gimpy. Yeah. Although, like I said, I doubt anyone's watching this, but we'll find out. If you guys like the, the painting videos, I will keep them up because, like I said, I paint shit all the time, so I will not have a dearth of material to go with. What drives me nuts is things like this. Like, you'll miss a spot, and you'll think you've, you've hit everything, and then you'll realize afterwards, after you've put up your paint, 
stopped with that color and started working on a new color that you missed a spot so you've got to wrench your brush off and go back and hit that i do like to try to have it going like this though where i've got at least a couple models that i'm working on so i can paint one while the other's drying and then while this one's drying i'll go hit the different color on this one and just go back and forth with it as i do it and i think it uh, it works really well that way especially if you're doing a mass of troops especially the little enemy troops have them lined up and then just go down the line whatever color you're doing if you're doing your browns you know boom 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 and then go back to the first one hit whatever your next color is and if you do it like a little assembly line like that you can get a, a whole army painted in a relatively short amount of time all right i think i got the majority of the bone on this and the good part is it doesn't have to be perfect because i am going to come back with a wash so even if I miss a little bit of bone here or there on it, those parts are going to get hit with that brown wash to like dirty and muddy them up. So that white will get washed off anyway. So I'm not horribly worried about every little part of the bone being covered on it. I like to make sure it's covered as much as possible, but I think we're looking good. At this rate though, it's going to take me forever to get these guys painted up. All right, so let's see what we got. Oh, and do you guys, have you ever watched them? Because I'll watch some people like painting videos for their, their tips to learn better techniques, things like that. And some of them lick their damn paintbrushes. It's like, what the hell are you doing? So these two are the ones that I'm working on. And I'm just gonna use a uniform color. I, know, I try to save myself like paint colors if I can, not having to go back and hit a whole bunch of different ones. I'm trying to find the best angle for you guys. But their boots and these little arm guards here, the little arm straps, and then the little neck scarf, I'm gonna do all in the same color just to save myself a little trouble. I meant to hit these little, and this is, oh, I hate it when GW does this crap too. When I was putting these models together, the little wings right here on the tip of the damn boots was a separate piece with the tiniest little notch to stick it to the boot to like glue it on. GW, if you ever see this shit, do not cut off that small piece as the piece that you got to glue on. I don't care if I got to glue on an arm or a leg or a head or glue the body yet. That's fine. That's to be expected. Doing crap like this is just irritating, especially those of us who are a little older. Eyesight's not quite as good as it used to be, and we're trying to get this stuff together, and we usually end up with the damn glue sticking to us, gluing our fingers together, gluing stuff to crap that shouldn't be stuck to. Don't do that crap. That's irritating. Little small pieces like that, no. Or they'll do something like where the uh, little, uh, what do you call it, little piece of cloth that's hanging down here that'll be a separate piece no have big blocky pieces that we get to put together remember a lot of us are old uh, but i'll pick up on the next one we'll finish painting these guys up and then probably go on to our we got some blitzers uh skeletons to do next as well as these guys are skeletons too right yeah these are like skeletal linemen so there's six skeletons to get. We've got these. They're two poses of uh, like skeletal linemen. The skeletal blitzers. Then there's two ghouls to get, which it's kind of weird because they show them on the box. One of them is purple, but then on the front of the box, they show one of them, where are they at? Green and then the other purple. And I think I'm just going to stick with a uniform color and just do them all green. And then the uh, the rest are four zombies that are just two different poses. Those won't be too hard because I can just hit the majority of those guys in the necrotic flesh color, which is this light green. And then if you go over that necrotic flesh with like a green wash, it gives it a good look with a not a whole lot of effort. These are some of the little... Uh, pieces the little tracker token type pieces painting those up as I go along with some of these colors 
Got to do the coins too. I love these little coins that they do in the game. I think that's cool stuff. All right. But anyway, we're going to stop this one here. You guys feel free to put down in the comments what you thought of my little uh, paint videos. And if you like them and if you guys want to see more of them, y'all take care. I'll catch you in the next one.